Hello everyone, welcome back at SEDA College Online and I'm really glad to be with you here for one more day, okay? So, I will start my lesson today with just one request. I uh, will be asking you to uh, write in the chat and in the comment section, so please do. I want to see as many people as possible interacting with each other and uh, try to take advantage of me being here. Try to write down any answer you, any question you have, and I will definitely answer. So, I hope you're doing great today. I feel really, really well myself. And just to ask you more officially, how do you feel today? You know the drill by now, so go in the comment section and in the live chat and tell me how you feel, all right? So, uh, let's start with a few more questions that I want you to tell me about you. These are my three questions and I want you to write down an answer on the live chat. How quickly do you learn? How often do you revise? And how much time do you spend studying? Now, the two last questions are not trap questions. I'm not here to trick you. You can say the truth. I know that it can be difficult to revise a lot or to spend a lot of time studying in between other things. But I'm sure you're doing your best. Personally, for example, uh, I think I learn quite quickly. I generally enjoy learning new things and when I uh, am really focused, I think I learn quickly. I revise about uh, once every 15 days maybe or once a month, but, but maybe it's a good idea to revise more often too. And how much time do you spend studying? Personally, I spend, uh, I can spend hours studying if I'm interested, uh, really interested in something. If I'm not really interested, maybe two hours per week would be okay. And here I have some sample answers that I heard before from other students. For example, I learned quite quickly I hardly ever revise, okay, almost never, but my tip is try not to do that. Revision every once in a while is really good for you. And I study here for an hour. I want you to take a look at the bold words and I'm pretty sure that you can tell me, you can guess, the topic of discussion for today's class. So you can write your guess in the comments. What do you think we are talking about? You can see typical suffixes, ly, quickly, hardly, and maybe not so typical for you, adverbs. So, that's it, I said it. We're talking about adverbs. And I'm sure that you have many adverbs coming to your mind right now. Adverbs that finish mostly in L-Y. But can anyone tell me the different types of adverbs? If you have any ideas, you can type them. In the meanwhile, I will um, try slowly to go through with you the different types of categories. One example is adverbs of manner. What does manner mean? It, uh, ha it has to do with how you do something, the way that you do it. For example, I drive 
slowly. Okay, the manner of driving. Another category is adverbs of time and place, which are very, very common, actually. In my example, my previous example, you saw here for an hour. Here is an adverb of place for an hour, an adverb of time, well, an adverbial phrase, really, because it's not just one word, but it's a phrase. Another category is adverbs of frequency. How often does something happen? And I'm sure that you are really familiar with adverbs of frequency because it's one of the first things that we learn in lower levels uh, since we start learning a new language. Adverbs of degree is the next one. This shows you how much of something you do a little bit a lot for example and the last category we're going to talk about is adverbs of opinion they show a, a comment like the adverb i used a lot in the first few minutes of our class when I was giving you my examples for the questions I used a lot the word personally so personally is an adverb that belongs to this category now I will have you practice a little bit for starters just to make sure we can identify the adverbs and place them in the correct category here are some samples. I want you to take a minute and think which adverb fits in which category. You can start. The adverbs you see are all day, incredibly, usually, slowly, nearly, a lot, unfortunately. And now sometimes I get questions about the meaning of the word nearly, but I will not reveal the answer right now because we will talk about it in a few minutes in detail. And if you uh, have done the matching, you can also type your answers in the comments box. Okay, so let's start with manner, how we do something. Slowly is an adverb of manner. Time and place. All day. So all these words that you have in mind, all day, every day, once in a while, are adverbs of time, uh, of time. And frequency, we have usually and a lot. How frequent, how often do you do it? Degree, we have nearly and incredibly. So, I am incredibly lucky, you could say. I am a bit tired. And of course, opinion, we have unfortunately. Unfortunately, something bad happened. But my next question is about all these categories of adverbs. Yeah, we know the meaning, we know the suffixes, we know uh, in which category they belong, but do you know in which position we need to place them in a sentence? Do we place them in the beginning, in the middle, in the end, before the verb, after the verb. So let's see if you can think about that. Think about adverbs of manner, like slowly. Where are we going to place it in the sentence? Think about the example I gave you earlier with the adjective quickly, which is also an adverb of manner. If you think about it, we would say, I drive 
quickly. I speak slowly. So we use it after the verb because it describes the verb. And I'm sure you can all think about words like all day, once a week. Where would you place that in your sentence? Something that we learn from our first classes. In the end of the sentence, of course. And then we have adverbs of frequency. Now, you should know that. Imagine all these adverbs of frequency that you know. Always, never, sometimes, occasionally, rarely, frequently, usually. Where do you place them? Would you say, I eat usually breakfast? I usually eat breakfast? So it's always, sorry, before the verb. And then we have degree. Usually uh, adverbs of degree describe an adjective incredibly tired. So we use them before the adjective. In between the adjective, in between the verb and the adjective, if you want, I feel incredibly tired. And the last one, opinion, I think it might be one of the easiest ones to remember because we start our sentence with that. Unfortunately, I was late. Okay. So I will give you just a minute to look this slide, take a look at the table and try to memorize it, try to focus on it as much as you can because the following will be a practice exercise where I will give you sentences which are out of order and you will need to put them in the correct order. This includes putting the adverb in the correct position in the sentence as well. So, take your time, memorize, and let's take a look together. This is your first sentence. He, English, can fluently speak. Try to put it in the correct order and write the sentence in the comments. A, a set of questions that you can use in order to find the correct uh, answer is first, which word is the adverb? Second, uh, what type of adverb is it? And third, where do we place this adverb in the sentence? So our first example here would be, he can speak English fluently, because fluently is an adverb of manner. How do you speak English? Let's take a look at the second example. Extremely happy was she passed she the test. Again, take a few seconds to think about it, type the answer in the chat box. And again, follow the process. What is the adverb? What type is it? Where do we place it? Here, your adverb is extremely. Extremely? What type of adverb is it? Can you think about it? The same as incredibly shows degree, how much. So, we place it before adjective. She was extremely happy she passed the test. 
Let's go to example number three. Job, find, I will, ideally, in Dublin, a. Uh. And just a, a small note, don't forget the coma. After the word ideally, you will need a coma. Did you find your adverb? I think it's easy. You have a standard suffix. So our adverb here is ideally. And what type of adverb is it? Where will you place it? If you remember, it shows opinion. So, we start our sentence with it. Ideally, comma, I'll find a job in Dublin. And our last example, I practice on rarely my own. Trace your adverb. Tell me which the answer is. Write it in the comments. So rarely here, remember, it shows frequency, how often. And if you remember, well, we use this types of adverbs before the verb. I rarely practice on my own. Which um, is something that maybe you should change if you actually do that. If you rarely practice on your own, maybe it's a good idea to practice a bit more. Because what you do on your own is half the work, really. Alright, now if you have any questions about the specific exercise, about the order of adverbs, tell me. Do not hesitate. Now is your chance. And the next thing we're going to talk about is... A few confusing adverbs, adverbs that are very, very similar. And sometimes we don't know which one we need to use in each case. These are uh, four examples of sets of adverbs. Hard and hardly. Still and yet. Late and lately near and nearly. So, I know that some of these um, may not be familiar, maybe you're not sure about the meaning, but I will not uh, give you any definitions. I will uh, wait for you first to read the sentences. Try to guess which word fits where. Try to understand the meaning, uh, the difference in the meaning, and then I will also give my explanations. So you can start reading the sentences. I will read them with you as well. I can see through the fog. He was training. I haven't watched this film. He is watching TV. Please don't arrive again. I've been feeling tired. He, now here it's a typo, it's not the, it's he. He was driving the pavement. He crashed the car. So try to guess the answer. You can write it in the comments, okay? For example, one hard, two hardly. Whatever you think the correct answer is. And 
and this exercise um, is really all about meaning the form does not play a role here it doesn't have to do with grammar position anymore just focus on the meaning all right so let's take a look together uh, at the sentences one by one I can hardly see through the fog. Now, what does this mean? This means that I almost can't see anything. Hardly has a negative meaning. Remember the example we saw in the beginning of the class? I hardly ever revise. I almost never revise. The next sentence, he was training hard. So you're talking about a uh, manner. He was training, how was he training? He was training hard. The next set is, I haven't watched this film yet. So yet talks about actions that haven't finished or haven't even begun yet. But still, it's talking about an action that has started, an action that is happening and keeps happening. So you are focusing on the progress here. Please don't arrive late again. So late is an adverb of time but it has a different meaning than lately. Lately has the same meaning as recently, in the last few weeks, the last few days. I've been feeling tired lately. And then the last set, he was driving near the pavement. Uh, it's an adverb of play. And he nearly crashed the car. Now remember that nearly has a different meaning. It means almost. He almost crashed the car. So take again a very, very quick look and tell me. Do you have any questions about the difference between these sets of words? Is there something more that you want me to clarify? Alright, so the last thing that I want to focus on in relation to adverbs is a little bit of pronunciation, especially the word stress. So I want you to look at these uh, 10 adverbs and try to think which syllable do we stress in I, dear, the, which is the stressed one? In aggressively, which syllable do you stress? Take a minute to think about that. Of course, I, I will not be pronouncing the words for you right now, but I will pronounce them once you have finished. And I think that maybe the shorter words that have fewer syllables, uh, it might be easier for you to find the correct stress. It is usually longer words with more syllables that might be a little bit more challenging in relation to uh, the stress. And you see that actually all the words that we have here are pretty classic with the L-Y and we have different types of adverbs. We have opinion, ideally, we have aggressively, manner, we have slightly, 
which is degree okay and let's take a look together now I will pronounce the words so focus on the stress ideally aggressively definitely slightly obviously specifically especially gradually luckily powerfully so it is um, a really good idea to practice uh, the stress and if you have any questions about the sounds of the word something that you're not sure about uh, or something that you missed you can also ask me about that and I will give you more information about the single sounds. Alright guys, now this is all that we are going to talk about about adverbs. We are going to move on to something else for the last part of our class. So if you have anything to ask about adverbs and adverbial phrases in general, Please do it now. All right then. So let's move on to the next part. If you remember, uh, a few classes ago, we talked about narrative tenses and I gave you some tips about writing stories, short stories, using the narrative tenses. Now my question today is what is a story? Usually we think about maybe films and books. Some people hear about the word story and may feel a bit overwhelmed because they think of long books that they have never finished for example. But a story is a lot more than that. We use stories in our everyday lives. And this is another example of a story. Does it seem long to you? No. And if you read it, we'll read together actually. Do you think this is a good story? Let's take a look. This is a story by Alexander McCosney. It's about the scientific ethics, a crash course. So we have a biological scientist working at the cutting edge of fly genetics discovered that by manipulating a certain gene, he could produce monster flies. This discovery had commercial implications, especially for waste disposal. But he stopped the experiment, burning his paper. Nuclear scientists did not do this. So do you think this is just a very short and unimportant story? Or do you think this is a very serious story with a lot of ideas that are passed to the reader? I think it's the second one and you can start with that and keep it in mind that a story can be one sentence that has a beginning, a middle and an end. And this is a tip for you as learners. If you want to write a story you don't have to write a hundred pages. You can start small. You can start by writing one sentence. You can start by writing one paragraph. And the more you work on that, the better you will be able to write. Sometimes it is actually even more difficult for someone to write a short story. Now, this is an example of the 
shortest story ever, which was considered as a complete story with a, a beginning, a middle, and an end. It is allegedly written by Ernest Hemingway. We're not sure about that. So that's the story. For sale. Baby shoes. Never worn. What comes in your mind when you read that? Do you just read the words? Is this just an ad to sell something for you? Or is there a story that comes in your mind? Do other pictures, other images come in your mind? Do feelings come to the surface? Because that's what a story does. And you see it's six words. Now I will show you a few more examples that famous writers have, uh, have written trying to also write six word stories and then you will try to write your own story okay that's another example see that shadow it's not yours how does that story make you feel and what comes uh, to mind when you read that? Let's see another one. Megan's baby. John's surname. Jean's eyes. You see how easily you can say a story using just six words? Nothing else is needed here. Served the pie, watched him die. Now that's a little bit more bleak, but for me is actually a very successful story. And I have a few more examples. Remember, after these examples, it's your turn to write the story so you can start getting ready. Thought love must fade, but no. You see, that's a more optimistic story. Love does not fade. They awaited sunrise. It never came. Now, as I'm reading, you can also tell me what you think when you read this. What do you think the story is about? Because, of course, different people reading this can get different stories coming in mind. That's a favorite. Womb, gloom, groom. Gloom, room, tomb. That's a story that it has a very good, actually, a pronunciation exercise in it. And it actually describes the pattern of life from birth to death. Womb, you are being born through your mother's womb. You bloom, you grow up, you become a groom, so you get married. Bloom, you become depressed. Room, referring to rheumatoid diseases, you're getting old, health problems, and tomb, you die. And this is even shorter. Three words. Mind what gap? All right. So, I will just give you an example of my story. A story that I wrote to show you how you can do it and then you can write your own just six words remember and I want to uh, see your answers posted because it's very very important 
and I'm looking forward to reading them. So that's my story. He knelt. She smiled. They regretted. Knelt is the past simple of the verb kneel, right? And now it's finally your turn, guys, okay? So let's see what you can do. I'll give you one minute to write these six words and give me a story. And it's a good challenge for you because as I told you earlier, Sometimes it's much more difficult to write something short than to write something longer. So let's uh, take it as your personal challenge. And I want as many of you to try it as possible. If all of you can try it, I will be really, really glad to read your comments because, as I've said before, usually I see comments um, on the live chat from very specific people and I thank them for that, but I want to see more comments from you. Okay, so you can continue writing. Uh, because I will be seeing your stories, but this is actually the end of our class for today. And if you uh, write something more, if you think about something more later, you can always post um, in the comment section of the SEDA College Online platform, okay? So the comment section in the platform is always open. You can go back even tomorrow, even another day, and write down your answers, okay? So a small recap of what we learned today. We talked about adverbs and adverbial phrases, how we use them in a sentence, what is their position, we focused a little bit on pronunciation of adverbs, specifically the word stress. And we saw the six word stories and how you can write six word stories, which is a really nice activity to do to challenge yourself and promote your creativity. So thank you guys for one more day for being here with me. Before you go, remember to tell me, what did you learn today? Uh, which of the things that we talked about really stuck with you? I really want to know. And uh, thank you again for being here. See you next time. And I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.